try and start this drive in the air. He'll dump this down to Matt Breida. So the completion results there in nine yards. And it'll bring up a second and short. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Here's the first carry from Matt Breida. And some room to roam now. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A big pickup there, 18 yards at a Buccaneer first. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Once again, they run with Breed on first down. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Travis Jones makes a tackle. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game was we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Back to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. So the completion good for six yards. And that'll bring up fourth down. They'll drop to throw. To the sideline, and he's got it. They say the feet are down. Yes, the line judge says they're in. That'll be a first down. A defensive breakdown allows a pickup of 16 on fourth down. So after the fourth down conversion, now first and 10 inside the 25. A run between the tackles with Breda. And he's brought down, but he has it down to the 12 on a pickup of 12, first and 10. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. In motion comes the tight end left. On first down, here's Breida. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now second and nine from the 10. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Call it a gain of three on the play. And now third down and six to go.
They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. But when you're going up against a talented receiver like that, you just know that they're going to bring more people to it, right? They've got to double cover them every chance they get. I think that that is what we're going to see all game long, an early taste of that double, maybe even sometimes triple coverage we might see. Yeah, I think what they're counting on, his talent to sometimes beat that double coverage. Garibay's kick is good, and the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take, punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. A give up the middle to Dobbins. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Two yards on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Nothing after one on EA Sports. First down, he'll drop to throw. Yeah, that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. The Ravens had two and two through the first four weeks of the season. Yeah, they come in losers at two straight, so trying to turn things around here. And you just mentioned two straight, and when you...
don't follow trends. Say that with my chest. No, I will not bend. Don't follow trends. Say that with my chest. No, I will not bend. Yeah, all right, my flow sinister. This ain't rap music, this straight literature. Small minded, all your ideas miniature. They tend to hate on you when they can't get rid of you. I ain't going nowhere, 20 year career minimum. Call hit boy for beats, ask for 10 of them. I don't follow trends, my, my I swing the pendulum. If the, if the bag good, I'm gonna give her some. Let's reflect times, I try to collect minds from complex rhymes. And by the way, shut out Tech Nine. Uh, go and shut the, shut the up, just let me talk. I'm a time bomb that's waiting to go off. Quite nuclear, amazing what fame could do to you. Too peculiar, although I'm truly a renaissance starter. My mind divine, it take me a lot farther. Growing up, I really had beef with my father. But why bother explaining my feelings? Try harder, but either way, they gon' paint you the villain. Eight months with no phone, dog. we aiming for brilliance. High level maintaining the building, we making a killing. I write my flow sinister. This ain't rap music, this straight literature. Small minded, all your ideas miniature. They tend to hate on you when they can't get rid of you. A wise man told me that silence never betrayed him. Keep your mouth shut, cause go ultimatum. Yeah. Stupid situations, the tongue often creates them. The motor mouth is usually causing mayhem. Little tune, flow sinister, I'ma finish him. Many men gon' need ministers. I ain't men in them. Enemies, I'm the enema. I'ma t on them, just like my keys drop my on a dental work, my thoughts I keep confidential, it's consequential, philosophies unidentical, I'm not in the year, my Siamese brother Benjamin, that's how I stick to him, these diamond bees all BBs, I call them Vivica, skating underneath a bridge, stay hustling as it is, make money, feed the kids, ain't nothing in the fridge, wake up, repeat the sins, hey, I need a 10, stay muddy to the lid, 800, eat a, eat a, yeah, all right, my flow sinister, yeah. This ain't rap music, this straight literature. Small minded, but all your ideas miniature. They tend to hate on you when they can't get rid of you. I ain't going nowhere, 20 year career minimum. Call hit boy for beats, ask for 10 of them. I don't follow trends, my I swing the pendulum. If the, if the bad good, I'm gonna give her some. Yeah, all right, my flow sinister. Yeah, all right, my flow sinister. Yeah, all right, my flow sinister. Never lied in my rhymes. You can go ask Jennifer, that's my mom's name. I create and find change. My mind frame ensures that forever I reign. It's that hate, boy. Yeah, my day ones here to dance a double dean. So you know it's only right, that's how we eat. Came all the way from losing to win. Yeah, I did it. But it ain't just me, it's the whole team. Share it with the whole team. Congratulate the whole team. Go when you ride it like we ride it with each other. Ain't no why in this. It's the whole team. Share it with the whole team. Congratulate the whole team. Go when you ride it like we ride it with each other. Ain't no why in this. Tell them line it up. Like a fourth and one, we sneaky when we slide up. Y'all on offense with no defense. Now y'all time is up. We make the hits, y'all take the hits, and now we fired up. Three, two, one, don't need no break. Hut one, hut two, give it straight, that's how I like it. And we grind it every night to make it here, now it's exciting. See, they just getting cake, they ain't never gonna get no ice. And all we want is chips, ring fingers looking ice. My day ones, yeah, the dance is double beginning. So you know it's only right, that's how we in it. Came all the way from losing to winning. Yeah, I did it. But it ain't just me, it's the whole team. The rain is falling, the fans are soaked, but here's the bottom line. We've got football at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. Today, we've got a good Week 5 matchup in store here between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Baltimore Ravens. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. This will be fielded inside the five. And he'll be out of bounds here, a yard shy of the 25 and the 24. Let's go now.
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. So a big defensive play there on the opening drive, no less, as they make the interception and bring it back for the score. And I think that's a signal for how this defense wants to play. They want to be disruptive, and you know they're going to take some chances. Well, sometimes it can burn you, but right there, it paid off. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. Take it in at the three. And he'll be out of bounds across the 25. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. It'll go as a gain of four, and it brings up third and five now. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it could turn into a big game downfield. What a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. So just three yards on the completion there, and that's going to make it fourth down. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. A 41-yard punt, nine on the return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Well, this defense for the Buccaneers, they were very good last week in the win over New Orleans. And one of the key things you always look for when you're evaluating a defense is how opportunistic are they? How many takeaways do they get per game? And how about last week's game? That number? Six absolutely phenomenal performance. They were on top of their game right from the first snap. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. His first pass attempt of the game, Charles, and the pass rush was right there to hit him. But no fear, he delivered an accurate ball. Nice catch. And you never want to see your quarterback getting hit. But it also sends a message to the rest of the team when he's able to take that shot and still deliver downfield. Showing a little toughness, and the team rallies around him. This could really help them on their drive. Second down, a run with Dobbins. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They give those two yards right back, and now they're looking at a third and ten. That's uh, a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On third down, he'll drop to throw. That's into the hands of Edwards. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 44-yard line. The third down conversion successful. A gain of 11. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now a toss left side for Dobbins. 
And he is going to lose yardage here. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Part of their struggles last week was getting these negative plays on first and second down. That's something they have to be wary of as this game continues. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. They'll look to throw. And he fires one that's intercepted. And the Buccaneers are going to take over at their own 28-yard line. Well, certainly felt like he was going to challenge this defense no matter what. And he stepped up and tried to throw it to the outermost edge of the zone coverage. And they were more than ready for it. The problem now is if they are limited in what they're doing throwing the football, they got to figure out how to move it without being able to throw it to the outside and throw it downfield. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue, just make sure you feed me the football? And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, number of carries. Just keep giving it to him. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. They'll look to throw here on first down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he goes out of bounds, it looks like right at the 50. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Brita, they'll go up the middle. And some room to work. On a nice burst there as he'll take this inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. 6-0 our score after one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll bring a receiver in motion right. They run again with Breda to about the 26 here. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's a handoff left side to Brita. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. They'll set up to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. We always hear a lot of veterans on the defensive side of the football. They talk about smelling blood in the water, putting pressure on a rookie. They got to him there to force it free, but couldn't recover. Then you mentioned the pressure. Rookie quarterback, you're going to bring more pressure to him at all times because you don't know how he's going to hold up. He was fortunate there. Luck was on his side, able to recover that fumble.
Now back to throw. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. The Bucs try it on fourth down, but come up empty. And the Ravens are going to get the football back. Well, I guess they wanted to get that touchdown right back on their first drive, but failed to do so. And what they have to be careful of is pushing so hard to stay right there, to stay even with their opponent, that they gas themselves out. You know, it's almost like horse racing. Sometimes you don't want to take your horse right to the front and let them do all the work, and then someone catch them at the end and pass them up. You want to make sure you moderate what you're doing along the way and then go for the big finish. Second and nine now. Got Edwards now on the slant. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. falling the fans are soaked but here's the bottom line we've got football at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore Maryland today we've got a good week five matchup in store here between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Baltimore Ravens seems like we were just starting training camp but here we are in October and off we go on EA Sports takes it at the seven and they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11. They'll come out throwing here on first down. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 19 yards right off the bat. And a quick first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in 
it on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. First carry for the former Buckeye, J.K. Dobbins. And he'll get what he can up the middle. Three yards, and that'll bring up second down. Well, this defense for the Bucs, they were very good last week in the win over New Orleans. No matter what coverage was called, they were right in the hip pockets of the receivers all game long, step for step, running their routes with them. Turned out they were right there every time the ball was in the air, and they came away with five interceptions in that one. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. He'll drop to throw. And that will be incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. Third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. Fourth down, and out comes Jordan Stout here to punt. And he'll be out of bounds near the 30. In fact, right on the 30. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So first and 10 now from the 30. And they'll start out here with a jet sweep. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First down yardage on the first play of the drive, giving 14. And that's something you have to get ready for defensively because in today's NFL, teams will use their wide receivers on jet sweeps, end of rounds. They'll move it back in the backfield and make them running backs. Partner, this was much more of a tap pass, but effective nonetheless. And I think both guys love it. If you're a quarterback, it's an easy completion. If you're, He's got a man complete. A big play that time for Tampa Bay. 42 yards. There's the arm strength that we saw in college and during the scouting process. And really, it's not just the arm strength there, but the placement as well. To me, that was an excellent combination of arm talent and accuracy. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run for the first time here with Matt Breida. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Dancing to his left. And they're going to get him. They bring him down to the sack back at the 16-yard line. Credit that sack to Travis Jones. We'll see what they have drawn up here. A little bit behind the line. 12 yards needed to gain a first down. Out of the gun now on third down. And that is incomplete. He was waving his arms around the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass and you blew coverage on, what would you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, <laughs> but since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that That's answer. That's cold-blooded. <laughs> cold-blooded. <laughs> So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. They go counter with Breda, and he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. The yards may start getting a little tougher to come by down here near the goal line. That's good work defensively there on first down, holding them to a short game. And this is going to be intercepted. 
picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And the Ravens are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Definitely not the ideal time to see that mistake, partner, because this is still a one-possession game. And that's at least a field goal that just vanished with that turnover. Now, pressure's on defensively to prevent that pick from turning into points for the other side. The Baltimore offense at the line, set to get going. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this. And looking for Andrews, but this is intercepted. Picked up by Levante David. And the Bucs are going to take possession of the football. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Looking to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. They've given him some different looks here defensively in the early going. He's only hit two of his first five passes. With a big third down coming up, he's hoping he's got a play dialed up that can take advantage of whatever the defense throws at him. They'll look to throw here. Oh, not sure he saw the linebacker there. Is that batted down and incomplete? Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. He'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bucs try it on fourth down to come up empty, and the Ravens are going to get the football back. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. Joe Tryon able to take him down. It's a loss of three. By that time, it looked like he essentially just ran right into the pass rush. Yeah, partner, I'm not much of an outdoorsman, but the fish jumped right into the net, didn't he? Because you've got to make sure that you're deep enough that you can get around the defensive end, have an angle there. But he couldn't do it because he actually cut that one off. Really nice play coming off the edge. And this is incomplete. Oh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays, and you don't get many opportunities to dial them up, and they just did, and they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. We sort of suspected that the elements might wreak havoc on both of these offenses, and that's been the case. No points on either side as this drive begins with a first down. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second at 12. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Breida. Takes this to the 27. Give him four yards. No score after one on EA Sports.
They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. And they'll send the tight end in motion left. Back to throw here. And this pass broken up. And the contact well time there. And now fourth down. Well, based on what we've seen so far, I don't think you can even call this a hard day anymore, partner, because this group we're watching, they are totally out of rhythm trying to get their game plan up and running. That zero on the scoreboard is glaring down at them with every incompletion. A nice job getting free on the return for 13 yards. And they will take over first and 10. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And given the elements, this might have been what we would have expected, Charles. Scoreless into the second quarter. The elements have definitely played a part in this game, a big part. And I think that both teams have been a little slow to adjust their playbook and start playing to whatever their strengths are in these conditions. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Oh, they're going to run a little pop pass here. Second and nine. They'll set up a throw. The quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. Ah, uh, the quarterback got away with one there. Looked like he was in line for a pick, but instead is knocked harmlessly to the turf. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. They're going to look to throw. That's into a crowd and intercepted. And the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. So a nice play defensively by the rookie coming up with the INT. And that's a late round pick right there, making a first round impact. And a lot of these day three corners end up winding up on special teams and sub packages and even on the practice squad. But he's really made an impact on this defense. And he comes up with the interception there. Back to throw now on first down. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. And he'll be brought down inside the 40-yard line. Second and four. And this is taken in at the five. Touchdown! A great play there. His second touchdown on the season. And the Bucs post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. The point after threw the raindrops up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. It hasn't gone particularly well for them. That's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic. Meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. 
Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And that's caught. It's Brian Edwards. Room here to run. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 39 yards there, a big one. And CD, we have seen some great runs the last few times we've been together, but I think we can at least put this one in our top five. That was a determined gallop there. They'll look to throw now on first down. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete. And they're going to move it down the inside the 25. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Back to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. drop to throw and it's gonna be batted down it will go the other way with the football the Ravens go for it but come up empty and the Buccaneers defense holds and they get the football back fourth down and they take to the air which really isn't a major surprise but how about the coverage they're able to bat it down the Bucks offense set to begin their next possession Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. And this is going to be a Bucks first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy. Let him pick up the first down. On first down, he'll drop to throw. His throw incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. He'll look to throw. He'll dump this down to Matt Breida. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling. Held it to an okay game. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. With his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half, we'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, this is a half where not just the coverage, but the entire defense is setting the tone in this game. On play action, they'll throw. On the move to his left. Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Well, he took a shot as he let that go. 
And it's going to bring up a third down. Locked in completions on first and second down. It certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll look to throw. Open man is Edwards. He's got it. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Steps away. Now he'll let it go deep down the left sideline. And it's incomplete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. As we've seen, their first two drives didn't yield anything points wise. Certainly feels like they think to themselves, it's time to open this thing up. Taking the big shot downfield. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. He's going to let it go again. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Bucs are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ballgame. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How'd things turn out for him? I think, okay, he's a guy in all the commercials now, right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's... It's caught inside the 25! And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. So we've reached halftime with just the lone touchdown here. 7-0 is our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, and we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Pulls it in at the 13. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape up past the 30. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. He'll get that out to the flat to White. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try and pick it up by running the option to the right. They'll try to pick this up on the ground with Breida. And he's got some space here. And now off to the races, down the right side. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Matt Breida, his third rushing touchdown of the year. And the Bucs come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. Extra point up and good by Garibay. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From the six. 
And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. Well, the opposition laid down the challenge and opening drive touchdown here to start the second half. And Charles, now you feel like this group needs to get an answer because this all of a sudden is a two-score game. Yeah, you're right about that. What was a small, magical spread to overcome? A little bit more daunting now. I think you're exactly right. Pressure is on because you don't want them getting the ball back with a chance to really extend this lead out. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. Well, let's face it, Brandon. They're down here in the second half. Want to try and make something happen. And if you're the guy with the ball in your hands, you're going to try even harder. Because I think all he was trying to do was to get outside the pocket and see if he can find a big play downfield. A pitch back. He'll get this down to the 21, just on the edge of the red zone. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. Wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Second and six. Gets the check down throw to White. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. That one good for 17 yards. And now they've got it first and goal. And remember, this drive started off following the turnover. And they've taken no time working their way down the short field. A nice connection there. And now they're looking at a first and goal. Breida. Is not going to get a whole lot, maybe a yard down to the three. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. White fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. They'd really like to make the short field pay off. We'll see if they can, but this is third and goal. And that is knocked away in the middle of the field and incomplete. So they opted to pass for it on third and goal. Let's see what they do on fourth and goal. Well, I think they threw it with the idea that if they didn't get it, they would go for it on fourth and goal. So they've got another play in their pocket. They're going to have to call it right now. No field goal here. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A great effort there. With his 14th touchdown of the year, second of the game. And the Bucs' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Extra point up and good by Garibay. And it's now 21 to nothing. The Bucks ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. Fielded right around the 8. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. They should put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. 
Another run here with Dobbins. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. We think, Brandon, I like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives. They're not just holding the line because they're doing their job, but they're doing more than that, aren't they? They're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield. And a great example right there for the loss on the... And my goodness, another interception. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Bucs are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. Well, there's two sides to this coin. I mean, on one side, five interceptions now thrown for him. That's tough. But, man, this defense, they have been ball hawking and impressive. But, Charles, let's flip it back over. If you're coaching a quarterback that's struggling this much at this stage of the game, do you maybe try to get him out? I would think about it, and i think about it awfully hard, but also, you might want to look into his eyes, see what he has. He might be one of those players that you don't want to affect his confidence by actually pulling him out of the game. So you have to know your player, you have to know the situation. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. You're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. On third down, he'll drop to throw. He'll get this into the hands of Breida. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. That's a third down conversion of 24 yards there. Nice play. So first and 10. And if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Again, he'll drop to throw. And incomplete on the deep ball. Pretty secure lead, but what's the harm in adding another touchdown, right? At least that's what they were thinking on that snap. But if he wants to add more points, got to bring the throw down just a little bit and keep it in the end zone. They'll send a receiver in motion to the right. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And this one is incomplete. With how the coverage was positioned, up was about the only spot the quarterback had to try and deliver that pass. Just put a little too much height on it. Incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. They'll look to throw again. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Marlon Humphrey. And the Ravens will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. And he will be taken down, but a big pickup there on what's going to be the final play of the third quarter. Three quarters in the books. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. Now back to throw. And that is incomplete here. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. On the counter now, it's Dobbins. And he's going to push his way down to about the 12. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? And now here is another interception. Picked by Tarverius Moore. And the Buccaneers are going to take over here up near the 40. 
Those INTs all sting when you throw one in the red zone. I think especially as a rookie, maybe it stings a little bit more. I think what you're saying is they don't all count the same, do they? Right? Interceptions in the red zone that you're giving up points now, those are precious. So you have to learn from those and in a hurry. Taken down at the 42. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. And even 100 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Now a give to Breda. Nice his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now a give running left is Breda. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. They'll send a receiver in motion left. On first down, here's Breda. And not a lot of daylight, not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. A run between the tackles with Breda. Five yards, now it's third and five. They're a pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Yeah, this won't be enough. Stop the yard short after a gain of three. Fourth down. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. They run for it with Breda, and they are going to stop him on fourth and one as he'll wind up going backwards. The Bucks try it on fourth down to come up empty, and the Ravens are going to get the football back. They'll start on the ground with Dobbins, and some room to maneuver. Shoves him aside. And all the way down to the 29. It's a big play there for Baltimore. 42 yards. A great run, but you know, this is probably where the offensive coordinator is saying, geez, we could have used a couple of these earlier in the game. Yeah, he's probably telling the head coach, well, talk to the run game coordinator about that. I just call the plays. We should have had this going right from the beginning. Right back to Dobbins on first. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough. And my goodness, another interception. Carlton Davis picks it. And the Bucs are going to have the football here at their own 18-yard line. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety. And you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. 
Now it looks like he'll throw here. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off by David Ajabo. And the Ravens are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. They'll set up to throw. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. Now the offense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Being chased out left. And this is going to be hauled in by the tight end, Andrews. It'll be a gain of 17, but even with that, they'll be well short here for fourth down. So fire the cannons. It's a victory here for Tampa.